All right, let's get into these shows here. The uh, Samoa Joe defeated Johnny Elite, who was uh, the former John Morrison. He was the wild card. And uh, they had a good match, muscle buster finish, and uh, Joe got the win. And then afterwards, they did an angle with Sanjay Dutt and Jay Lethal and Satnam Singh. And best friends ran down to make the save. So uh, Joe goes on to face, as we'll find out soon, the winner of the Phoenix and Kyle O'Reilly match. Which was um, Kyle O'Reilly. Real quick, um, JR signed a new 18-month contract um, to... Uh, so he's going to stay as announcer. His He had signed a three-year deal right about this time last year, right before... You know, we're, we're right at the time where... Um, the people who were signed, you know, the the first for the you know prior, right prior to the first show, because the first round of people were the people who were signed like on January the first week of the year, like January first, essentially. The Young Bucks and Kenny Omega was like February actually, um, but like Jericho and Cody Rhodes and all that. So they were due at this top of the year. So then the group that um, you know and Danielson and Kazarian were early also. Um, Scorpio Sky was early also, but a lot of the people who, um, and I think, um, um, you know, um, and Moxley would probably be one of those guys. If he signed a three-year deal, um, the three years would be up. I don't know if there's like a, I don't know the deals, like as far as like if he has a, um, you know, an option or whatever like that, but all of the people who would have debuted at that first show in Vegas that signed three-year deals and JR would have been one of those people where he debuted on that show. Um, their deals are coming up now. So um, that's going to be um, interesting to see. I mean, like, uh, obviously, you know, Stu Grayson's deal just came up and they didn't re sign him, um, which is the most publicized. But uh, JR signed for eight, you know, 18 months, which is an interesting number. So, so, so but anyway, that, that deal was. Uh, JR, I guess, announced it on his show, and we confirmed it So with, with him as fact. So, yeah, that's what's going on there. We had uh, Hangman Page versus Takeshita, which was a great television match. That match was great. And, oh, uh, my God. Yep, Hangman Page won with the GTS as CM Punk was doing commentary. And uh, CM Punk hit the ring afterwards and had the big stare down, and Page got all irritated and walked off. And uh, this match, go out of your way to watch this match. It was great. It was explosive. Um, if this was another era, which is not, um, if a match like this would have been on TV in any other era except in the last couple of years um, on 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 national TV, uh, Takeshita would have been an instant superstar from this loss because this match was just a star making performance by him. You know, as a Kind of an unknown. I mean, he did wrestle Jay Lethal on um, on Rampage, uh, you know, whatever it was about a week and a half ago. But, um, you know, he went toe-to-toe with the champion. He got near falls. It was so good. Like, deep down, everybody knew he, he's no way he's winning this match. I mean, Page is about to defend the title. There's no outside interference, distraction, nothing. They're just having a regular match. And they were buying his near falls. I mean, they popped. There was a... There was a double down spot where they just the whole place got up and gave him a standing ovation. And Takeshita actually like said he called his parents tonight and this was like the first time he ever called his parents after a match to tell them how much he loves being a pro wrestler. So he really this was like a this was you know, and he's been I think five time KOD champion, multi time champion there. And um, you know, he's won big awards there and everything like that. And you know, this was the highlight of his career, this match. And uh, he's, you know, he's good. You know, he's got size. He's got a good body. Um, you know, um, his everything was pinpoint. His strikes were great. They popped. You know, the crowd was ooing with him. And, you know, as pages were as well. Uh, it didn't, you know, for his size, an incredible looking flip dive. Um they just all kinds of big moves from both guys. This was, um, yeah, this was an, a sensational match. Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland beat J.D. Drake and Anthony Henry and afterwards announced that they were now a top five ranked team. Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs came out, followed by the Jurassic Express 
And it's going to be a three-way at the pay-per-view for the tag titles. And then Christian said next week, I think Jungle Boy, Swerve Strickland, and Ricky Starks should do a three-way. So that's announced for next week's Dynamite. Yeah, yeah. So it went exactly what we kind of talked about last week, you know, where it looked like it was going. Every Everything's going where it looked like it was going. I mean, that's the one thing with uh, AW booking is, is um, they kind of lead you where they're going, unlike WWE booking where they lead you in a direction and then, um, you know, just sometimes go there and then sometimes don't. Um, it should be, you know, I mean, that's a good match. Keith's lost some weight, which, which is a good thing. Um, and he looked... I thought Lee, you know, like, um, it was a short match and everything, but I thought Keith Lee looked pretty pretty damn good. We had MJF's segment with Wardlow, and this guy got so much heat. So he comes down to the ring with, uh, um, what's his name? Sean Spears. Sean Spears, and he's got, his, uh, he's got his belt. And they bring in Wardlow, who's shirtless and he's handcuffed, and he gets in the ring. And MGF's going to give him the 10 lashes. He gives him the first lash, and Wardlow doesn't even sell it. He No, he laughs. He laughs. He stands then, there and just laughs about it, which was not what anyone expected. Like, they did the total opposite of the baby face. You know, the baby, you know, the usual in this situation is, is your baby face, like, sells pain, and I'm in so much pain, and you, the, crowd's supposed to have sympathy this guy is like taking these lashes voluntarily for whatever cause that he needs and this one they went in a completely different direction he just laughed like this is nothing while his skin is all red and beat up and everything like that and the other thing was is the people completely did a bill Gold like he came out with all the security like kind of like bill goldberg except Bill Goldberg would come out without being handcuffed. And the place was doing the Wardlow chant to build to like the Goldberg name. And then when he was in the ring, they were still doing it. So it was a total, um, yeah, a total Bill Goldberg reaction. So he does a second one, a third one. Wardlow's just standing there. And finally, about the fourth or fifth, he just gets furious. And, and MGF's so mad that this guy's not selling these shots. And he's screaming, I hate you. I know this hurts. So he gets all the way up to nine, and the ninth one, Wardlow did sell. No, that was that was Spears who did the. He got up to like six or seven, and he got so frustrated he handed it to Spears. So Spears hit him with one shot, and that's the one that he sort of sold, and then popped like up, did like the Ishi thing, you know, where you do sell it, and then you just pop up and laugh again. Well, I think Spears hit him with with eight, which he didn't sell, but then he did sell the ninth one because we were at nine, and Wardlow says one more. And so MGF gets the belt, he gets behind him, but instead of strapping him, he kicks him in the balls, Wardlow goes to his knees, and MGF just starts hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. Crowd's strapped him over furious over at this guy. Yeah. And then he grabs the ring, puts it on, knocks the guy out, Spears hits the C4, they lay out Wardlow. This was a phenomenal, phenomenal segment. Yeah, so the only thing I would have changed, the heat was great, and I'm not saying it was wrong, but with, what they did was um, Spears hits his C4, covers Wardlow, and MJF, who's going to referee the cage match next Wednesday, counts one, two, three. I would have had Wardlow kick out at two and then have MJF sell that. But I'm sure that they're saving that spot for Wednesday's match where they probably will do something similar where MJF will probably you know give him a low blow or something and... and um, you know, he'll get hit with the move, and then MJF's there to count and try to do the fast count, and Wardlow kicks out. So, but I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done the visionary three count on Wardlow. I think he's um, not that like you know this is a great great segment, but I just thought that that would have been a great pop, and also just wouldn't want to do a three count on Wardlow right now. That's just uh, you know um, just my feeling that uh, he he can he can be a real face of the company right now he's got so much momentum and um little things like a little thing like that kick out would have just been you know i mean people want him to be the they want him to be bill goldberg and i always thought like if you were booking bill goldberg in the situation do you let the guy count three and the answer is no kyle o'reilly and ray phoenix the own heart tournament kyle o'reilly won with an arm bar to the bad arm of Ray Phoenix. This match was also an excellent match. Uh, Phoenix did all sorts of great stuff, and O'Reilly did all sorts of great counters. 
And uh, finally, as noted, got the arm bar. So it is Kyle O'Reilly, Samoa Joe, semifinals of the tournament. So that's on Wednesday. Yeah, love this match. Um, Ray Phoenix did, like, the big one was he did a rope walk to the, like, to the middle, jumped off, and did the Dragon Lee Hurricane Rana spot to the floor, which was just nuts. This guy, you know, coming back from that injury, he has not changed his style one iota. He is doing all the, you know, high-risk stuff. His timing, his timing on some of these kicks was just great. In fact, the timing with the two guys back and forth was, was great. Um, they were, you know, um, and it was, you know, contrasting styles. You had Kyle O'Reilly, um, you know, doing a lot of the ground wrestling and submissions and this guy doing a lot of kicks, spinning kicks and just different high flying moves and, uh, crowd loved it. Phoenix was way, way over. And, um, yeah, great match. We had the Blackpool Combat Club and Jericho and his crew coming out. And uh, it was supposed to be a face-to-face converse, uh, confrontation with uh, Jericho and Regal, but really it was just all the teams out there. And uh, Jericho does a heavy heat promo. He says, I can't believe you're here, Regal. I thought you'd be dead by now. Talks about uh, how Regal was a world-class addict. He runs down everybody in the Blackpool Combat Club. Says Danielson's a nerd. Says that uh, Regal might have to join the program with Moxley. And uh, finally, Regal takes the mic and he tells this long story about how every show he's ever been with Jericho, he's gone through Jericho's bag while Jericho's in the ring, taken his toothbrush out and shoved it up his ass. And of course, Jericho's upset. Garcia's upset. Regal says he did the same thing to Garcia last week. So finally, Jericho says, listen, I've had enough of this. At the pay-per-view, I want to face you guys in a third stadium stampede match. And before he can even get it out, Moxie grabs a mic. He just goes, I'm not doing that shit. And he says, we're not doing some goofy stadium stampede. If you want to face us... We're not going to do a goofy sports entertainment match. If you want to face us a double or nothing, it's going to be five-on-five gang warfare, no disqualifications... And uh, so that's apparently going to be the match. And then Jericho tries to stir dissension by talking about the things that Danielson had said about Eddie Kingston being lazy, the things Eddie Kingston had said about Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson, both of the uh, both of whom, however, uh, reiterate what they said, which leads to uh, Jericho wanting a challenging them to a fight. Uh, Kingston challenges them to a fight. Jericho won't go down to the ring. He starts to leave. Kingston wants to go after them. But uh, Danielson stops him, which makes Kingston mad. So Kingston and Danielson get into a shoving match. And uh, Moxley has to jump in between them. So basically, we have a uh, 10-man, no-holds-barred match at the pay-per-view. And they are teasing that uh, two of the members of the Babyface team are having issues. And they pretty much promised that this match will be filled with blood. Well, Everyone's going to bleed. Yeah, I don't think that needed to be promised. That's pretty yeah. much a guarantee. We had the uh, Britt Baker match. The Joker ended up being Maki Ito. And they did a lot of comedy in this match. And uh, finally, at this point in the show, by the way, uh, there were timing issues. And you could see the referee like they rushing, rushing Britt they, Baker they were, to put this thing through. on. They're rushing through this one, yeah. So she puts on her uh, hold. She gets the submission. And then they very quickly did a Tony Storm face-off with uh, Britt Baker because they'll be facing off in the semifinals. And, uh, so that's also Wednesday. Yes. Then we had a segment with Tony Schiavone interviewing Serena Deeb, who called out Dustin Rhodes to yell at him which led to Thunder yelled Rosa at, coming yelled out. Yelled at Tony Schiavone as well. Yeah. She was this whole to- segment should have been cut. I know <laughs> they don't like to cut segments, but this was an unnecessary segment. It really wasn't all that good a segment. It led to a main event that was like six minutes long and totally rushed. Well, well the thing, the thing um, they wanted to get that line, the Serena Deeb line in about how all these sacrifices that she made in her career, that nobody took women's wrestling seriously when she came through, that she had to get a boob job to get noticed by old perverts, which, which you know, did in fact get her into WWE, um, which had, you know, I mean, like, 
we could go through the Serena Deeb thing. And, you know, Serena Deeb was in OVW. Um, OVW had all of these women under contract at WWE, and the two most over women there were um, ODB and Serena Deeb. And WWE had no interest in either of them, even though they were the two most, most over because they were looking at pure looks and not that, you know, whatever, you know, whatever. The WWE had no interest in them, no matter how over they got, and they were the two most over there. And they got the reports that they were the two most over there, and neither of them got a contract. And Serena Deeb went and got a boob job, and all of a sudden finally got a contract. And then she said to prove that, um, you know, to, you know, like show her loyalty or whatever, she agreed to get her head shaved. Remember in the straight edge society thing, and, and, uh, you know, kind of like, uh, even then it wasn't good enough. And now, you know, she was mad at Tony Schiavone for predicting that Thunder Rosa would win. She was mad at Dustin Rhodes for predicting Thunder Rosa would win. And, uh, yeah, it kind of, the stuff with her and Dustin Rhodes was kind of uncomfortable because they made Dustin Rhodes, like, he couldn't say anything. Like, it's like, you know, what, you know, what do you have to say? And he wouldn't say anything. And it's like, do you have no balls? And you know what I mean? It just kept, it, it was weird. And then finally, you know, Thunder Rosa came out and, you know, it led to Thunder Rosa, Dustin pulling Thunder Rosa off of her and Thunder Rosa accidentally elbowed Dustin. And in doing so, um, she was checked on Dustin and Serena Deeb got the belt and gave her a belt shot and, um, you know, it was an angle for the match. You're trying to promote the match, but um, yeah, I, I, you know, whatever. It was. It wasn't. It. It, it was. It was. An, it was very, definitely an awkward segment. Then, of course, we had the main event, which was uh, Adam Cole and Jeff Hardy. It was weird, by the way, because the uh, the show opened with the uh, the Samoa Joe Johnny Elite match, and then on the bottom side of the screen, it said. Uh, it said Adam Cole versus Jeff Hardy next, and then it wasn't next, and that happened a couple of times on the show. So I don't know what happened with the graphics crew, but Adam Cole uh, beat Jeff Hardy, and as noted, totally rushed match. Uh, Adam Cole just jumped him, and they go boom, 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 boom. Uh, Jeff finally goes for the senton. Cole rolls out of the way. Jeff crashes. Cole hits the boom, gets the win. And uh, then they had an angle to shoot afterwards, so it had to be even more rushed, where the Young Bucks came down and they uh, distracted the Hardy so Cole could lay them out with clotheslines. They hit the BTE trigger. Sting and Darby hit the ring. Red Dragon came down, took out Darby. They killed this guy on the ramp with the high-low. And then they, of course, did the you know the uh, chair shot to the back on Sting that he doesn't sell, which always gets over. But he finally gets taken out, and then they put the uh, the chair around his foot, and Kyle O'Reilly does the uh, bombs away knee drop, uh, pulmonizing his ankle. So they took out Sting, and uh, it looks I like mean, in in theory that should be a Sting injury that puts him out for a while. Yep. In theory, it could be a reason for them not being on the pay per view. Could set up another match for the pay per view, although we got a lot of matches. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they go with the. If they go with Young Bucks, Hardys, Red Dragon, and Sting and Darby in a four-way just to get everyone on the show, that's and and and, and, and that is possible from this angle that they might do that. Um, that's pretty unwieldy, or maybe they just um, save that the Red Dragon, Sting and Darby match for you know like maybe a month down the line or something like that, and just go with Hardys and Young Bucks, which would really be better. Because that's much better as just a, a straight tag team match than mudding the waters with a four-way, I think. Well, it's Kyle versus Samoa Joe next week. Winner faces Adam Cole. So we could get Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly in a semifinal match for this Most, tournament. More, more likely Cole and Samoa Joe. Yes. Um, unless they want to do uh, Jay Lethal and Joe, which obviously is coming. If they want to do it on the pay-per-view, then, then Jay Lethal has to cost Joe the match. This week, if they don't want to do it on the pay per view, um, then Joe can go over, and then they can cost Joe the championship match. Either way, it's looking like uh, Adam Colbert Baker uh, family uh, might sweep the, might sweep this deal. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. 
If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.